Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We're gonna talk about nutrition for masters competitors. And as we hinted at last time, Adam, I'm not sure a ton changes, but certainly metabolism can adjust a little bit. I'm, I'm one of the rare people, I think about 5% who end up taking something for thyroid health. And so just in the last year or so, because of thyroid stimulating hormone increasing, I needed to uh, to get on, um, you know, Synthroid, and I think even if you tracked your your hormones like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone for your entire life, I think you do see even with training there is a slow migration downward. And I, I know it's it's very very common now for guys to be throwing around their testosterone numbers. A lot of people are interested in seeing you know, how low it gets pre-contest and then how long it takes to make a comeback. So it, it's, it's one of those things that I think, especially with, with um, hormone replacement therapy, a lot of people have those values. A lot of people are getting that blood work done. So if you're a master's com competitor and you're looking at making a comeback or doing this for your very first show, before you really start tackling nutrition, I would say get a full blood panel, get that endocrine system checked so you can see if, uh, if you need anything addressed there first. But do you typically, just as soon as somebody hires you, Adam, and they say, okay, I'm 50 years old, 60 years old, do you automatically account for that in nutrition? And if so, how? Yeah, you can, you can always make the assumption that, you know, the, um, there's just going to be less need for that amino acid availability with a uh, older person. So I usually will start with protein a little lower unless you get these rare cases of older people where they're just like an extreme ectomorph. But, um, you know, looking at photos, I think is really important and recognizing that person's body type. Um, but then you can make those general adjustments uh, based on, you know, maybe thyroid being slower. It is great if they have a full blood panel to look at so you can actually see what their lab results are showing and uh, maybe what hormones might be suppressed. Now, I, I don't find this to be true necessarily, but I'm, it's definitely something I've not done an entire literature review about. But as we get older, would you say people just handle carbohydrates differently because of insulin sensitivity? Maybe, maybe blood sugar levels you know, are a little bit higher or, or is that, do you find just completely dependent on somebody's genetics and activity level? It seems to be completely dependent on people's genetics. I have a girl that's, uh, she's 65 right now and she's eating upwards of 300 grams of carbs just fine. Again, um, you know, when I was thinking about this, she is an ectomorph for sure, um, and she stays extremely active. She just did a, a century ride on her bike a, a couple weeks ago, so um, she's just staying hella active right now. <laughs> hmm. That's great. Well, I can say now I've got exactly 30 years of nutrition data and I'm at, if I were still competing, I'm at the kind of top end of what my normal off season would be. And I don't think my calories are any lower right now. Um, you know, maybe if I was a, if it was a little bit heavier, there, there was a time I was about 15, 20 pounds heavier than I am now. Uh, and my calories were two or 300, you know, higher. But, you know, right now, I, I don't see any difference at all at this body weight and activity level than I would have when I was 20 or 25. So, you know, I think that really is dependent on your training intensity and training level. And, and I would say I'm, I'm actually probably, you know, I'm not using quite as much weight, but my training intensity and cardio intensity is, is just as high or better than back then. So I, I think that's, that's where you can really hold it together is – if injuries allow you to still train hard, I don't think you're going to see that much compromise unless there is something in your endocrine system, you know, your blood chem profile that you need to address. I think one of the biggest things is never stop moving, you know, never get rusty and you're, you're just going to see better blood work and better values overall. Um, you know, one thing I can for sure see is if somebody competed and then they like completely don't work out for years and then want to jump back into it versus somebody that has made the gym really a lifestyle and stayed in it, they usually bounce back so much faster. 
Very, very true. So uh, you guys, uh, just that's, that's the goal. Keep moving, like Adam said, and I don't think you're going to see a big difference in your nutrition. Maybe just slightly, but you probably have an underlying hormone issue there, which we'll talk about in an upcoming episode here. So you guys, thanks for watching and listening, and we will catch you next time as we continue this series on Master's Competition.